I'm talking today to Bob Klein, the principal author of Proposition 71, the bond measure that established the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, the state uh, funding agency for stem cell research. Welcome, Bob. Thank you very much. I think one of the things that people perhaps don't understand is how long it takes to get from a basic right. science discovery to uh, clinical trial even. And the opponents of stem cell research will say, well, embryonic stem cells have never cured anyone. Why are we bothering to spend money on them? Research takes a long time. You have to be dedicated. You have to be patient. You got to work with the tragedies and the victories. And, but when it's successful, like the polio vaccine, it means it saved uh, lives for now 50 years. Did you ever, along the way, have any doubts? And who did you turn to to kind of, you know, uh, assuage those doubts? During the campaign, uh, I was with Paul Berg, who had gotten the Nobel Prize for recombinant DNA, one of the great discoveries yes, in, in yeah. medicine. And he had the experience of going through a period in the 70s where his science was attacked and, and there were protesters and uh, people opposed to scientific research in this area who said, this is a waste of money. It'll never lead to anything. You'll never cure anyone with recombinant DNA. And in fact, the protesters shut down the science labs in Cambridge, in Massachusetts. The, the Harvard's labs were shut down. The year after they tried to shut it down in Congress, it had its first discovery, which was the antecedent or the initial discovery that led directly to, the, to creating artificial human insulin that keeps my son alive every day. It led to 100 critical heart and cancer drugs that have saved tens of thousands of lives. And in the most recent decade, it gave us the knowledge to help us decode the human genome. So Paul was someone that I knew, knew the history and I was in a car with him coming back from seeing a donor and I said, I've been told by so many individuals that they think that stem cell research actually could be as important as recombinant DNA. And that, is that true? He says, Bob, you just don't get it. He said, Bob, in all of human history, we've never been able to create a human cell. We've never been able to create a cardiomyocyte, a heart cell. We've never been able to create an islet cell for a pancreas to repair juvenile diabetes. He said, this whole scope of creating every cell type in the human body through human embryonic stem cells is a pivotal moment in history of medicine and science. He said, 20 years from now, you will not understand how medicine was ever practiced. At that point, I was speechless, and I was quiet for the whole rest of that ride. And I'm not quiet very often. What are the things that you think, you know, I'm really, really proud of that this agency has uh, done? Providing a platform for California scientists to really uh, open the stem cell field for the world has been remarkable. Over 700 medical discoveries, scientific discoveries have been published, 700. Those milestones for patients, as we see that research moving into early translation, as we see the Federal Drug Administration approving human safety trials, those milestones are remarkable. But we also have realized that California is not in this alone, and we have to obtain the scientific leverage of bringing the world together in this battle. So we now have 10 nations, Germany and Canada and Australia, Japan and India, among others, doing phenomenal research because they know not only does it mean changing the future of human suffering, but it means the high value jobs of the future that are so critical to their own prosperity. So disease, which has never known a national boundary, that plagues mankind for centuries, is now being joined in a battle with the best scientists in the world, thanks to the voters of California. Thank you for all you do. Thank you.